Hey little buddy. Uh, so, yeah. Where exactly do you think you're going? Looks like we got a painted turtle here. Sorry about all us humans. Let's get you somewhere safe. Let's go for a car ride. Hello. <laughs> I'm Rich Lund, and uh, this has been yet another interesting Herp Quest unexpected. This here you probably do recognize, as it is a very iconic, very recognizable turtle. This is the painted turtle. Chrysemis, Chrysemis picta. Chrysemis picta. We'll go with that one. Sorry about my Latin. And in fact, this is a representative of the subspecies, the Midland painted turtle. I know this for a couple of reasons. As far as the lower peninsula of Michigan, this is the only subspecies of painted turtle that we have. In the upper peninsula, you can have the western painted turtle. Its main color is that of an olive green, though that can be darker and darker all the way to where it might even look black. But then also, you've got these very distinguishable yellow and red markings. Uh, whether they be stripes, or in some cases, they almost look like dripping paint blotches. Hence, painted turtle. And it would appear that we have a female here. Two different ways that you can tell this with the painted turtle. First, with males, their front claws are usually considerably long. They use those front claws to help grasp onto the females during mating. This turtle's claws are quite shorter than what a male's would be, and so really that would be already enough to identify it as female, just from how very short they are. But also, and she, I tried, she's not having any close-ups of this, but her vent located on her tail, as with most turtles, when it's a female, it is before the end of the carapace, and hers is as well. Whereas if it was a male, it would usually be on the tail underneath a little bit past where the carapace would end. So, female midland painted turtle, and a beautiful lady. This is Michigan's most common turtle. And in fact, not just Michigan, but the Great Lakes region, the Great Lakes Basin itself, the most common turtle that you can find. And also, throughout their entire range, wherever they're usually found, they tend to be the most common turtle in that area. That includes almost all of the eastern and central United States, along with plenty of parts of southern Canada. And there's also a few pocket populations in areas like New Mexico and Arizona. A living icon, you could say. They wake up from hibernation as early as late or even mid-March. Depends upon the latitude that you're at and how warm it's gotten. But they've been known to be seen out basking when just some of the ice has melted on some of the lakes and ponds that they live in. And when it comes to basking, this is definitely a common pastime of this turtle. They usually do it in the mornings of warmer months. And uh, they can even be a collection of turtles taking advantage of the same nice basking spot. The painted turtle prefers still or very slow flowing waters. Um, rivers are not impossible, but again, nothing with like a super large current. And what's interesting about this species, plenty of other turtles, they'll stick to like one major water source usually. That's their territory. But for this species, they'll actually travel sometimes from one water source to another in the same day. Now, this species tends to be active only during the day. However, in very warm summer months when the heat is just too intense, they have been known to do some activity at night. Also, especially during night rains. They're omnivorous. They'll go after just about anything that moves. Snails, slugs, worms, aquatic insects especially, mosquito larvae, thank you, fish, tadpoles, small frogs and toads, but also plenty of aquatic plants, duckweed, uh, algae. They'll eat the leaves and they'll even eat the roots. And also interesting about this species, as with some other aquatic turtle species, they can't really swallow unless they're under the water. The water pressure is part of what allows them to function in the swallowing. When it comes to their major predators, as with many turtle species, well, there's really not much that's gonna get them once they're adults, but when they're younger, it's the raccoons, skunks, foxes, possums, mostly mammals. And it also would appear that uh, this one's had an encounter with, well, I don't know if it's a mammal for sure, but something scratched at its shell. Looks like it was at a younger age and it's healed since then, but it's got the scar to show it. And she is living to tell the tale. Now, as I said, as adults, there's not really too many predators that go after them. And tucking into the shell usually does them a pretty good job of defending themselves. However, 
as we've seen with many species on this series, their major concern after that is us. When we're developing areas and we remove some of its wetlands, well, we've pretty much eliminated the population that was there, haven't we? And so as an entire species, this one's doing fine. However, certain populations can easily be decimated or even just eliminated because of us humans. When it comes to mating, they can do it at any time during their active seasons. However, it usually does occur in the spring. And nesting tends to happen anywhere from mid-May to around mid-July. And they'll dig and lay their eggs several hundred meters sometimes away from the water source that they came from. As a species, they'll lay anywhere from just a few to 20 or more eggs in a nest. But when it comes to the western painted turtle, they'll usually just make one nest and so they'll drop a higher number of eggs. Whereas the midland painted turtle, this lady here, she might do it two or three times in one season. To where she usually only lays 10 or less eggs in one site and then might move on to the next one could be within a few days, could be a few weeks from the first nest. Their sex is determined by what temperature their eggs incubate at. Anywhere from 7 to 80 degrees, if that's the normal temperatures of the eggs while they're incubating, well, that produces just males. And from around 84 degrees upwards from that, you've got females. And if you're kind of in that middle range of 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, then you could have a nest that produces both males and females. That's pretty interesting, pretty cool. It could take anywhere from about two to three months for the incubation period, and this depends, of course, on temperature as well. And well, if a nest was made later on in the season, and it took a while for that incubation to happen, sometimes the hatchlings, they might hatch out of the eggs, but not actually leave the nest until the next spring. They'll actually stay in that nest area and hibernate over the winter. The first three years of their life, they have some very rapid growth. And again, that's when they're the most vulnerable. So growing rapidly and gaining more mass, more body size, and a thicker, harder shell, that's going to give them a bit more survival. After about three or four years of growth, they slow down in their growth pretty quickly. When it comes to sexual maturity, these guys don't take as long as some other turtle species, which is maybe one of the reasons why they're, mo they're so successful. Uh, males can be sexually mature as early as three years, and for females, as early as six years. And it's less about the years, more about the body size. But this is also then why, even though some populations have been decimated before, they can make a quicker recovery than other turtle species. But even so, even though the species is doing fine, it's not endangered, it's not threatened, it's not of special concern, you got to slow down on those roads. Watch out for them, especially during these May-June months. All right, this is a really cool find. Let's go uh, put her back where she'll be a little bit more comfortable. I'm Rich Lund. Thanks for joining me on this HerbQuest episode. And again, as always... If you're out there herping or doing anything out there in nature, let's leave it as good or better than we found it. Catch you next time.